Welcome back. We're wrapping up this course on Inventor iLogic. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about incorporating the Save As and Save Copy As commands into our algorithms. Let's start by creating a rule. Right click, Add Rule. Accept the default name. Expand the Document branch. Double click on the File Save As snippet. Let me highlight the path and the file name. And the second argument is a Boolean true false. So, if it's true, the file will save as a copy, and if it's false, a save as operation will run. Let's replace the first argument here. We've got a few different snippets we can use. There's path, file name, path and file name, change extension, workspace path, etc. For this example, I'm going to use the path and the file name. The argument here allows us to use or not use extensions. If the value is false, the extensions won't be used. Now since we're saving a copy of our file, we specify a name. We'll do that within double quotations, for example, dash 001.ipt. Now let's click OK and see how this command works. Visually, nothing has changed, but the file with the new name was saved. Let's double click on our rule to open it for more editing. I'm going to expand the logic a little bit. First, I'm going to incorporate an if statement. Now let's place this line inside the if statement. In the evaluation statement, I'm going to use the dir function. Space equals space empty string. This function returns a string which represents the name of the file, the directories, volume, and so on. Let's copy our first argument. And let's place it right here. The logic is going to go like this. If the dir function returns an empty string, it means the file doesn't exist. So then this line of code will run. A new file of the name specified is going to be saved. To cycle through the existing files, I'm going to incorporate a do while loop. Let's begin by declaring and initializing a variable dim a as integer equals 1. Here I'm going to type in do while i is less than 100. And down below I'll type in loop. Let's add a line before the loop tag i equals i plus 1. Otherwise, we'll end up with an infinite loop, as you may remember from a previous tutorial on this topic. Next, we need to change the name of our part, and let me show you how to do this. I'm going to use a variable, i. But, as you see, we have some issue here. Right now, we're using a three-digit number. It's got two zeros before the number one. But, as you see above, i is a single digit number, 1. Let's declare another variable, dim a, as a string. Now let's type a, space, equal sign, space, i, period, to string. And I'll open and close some parentheses. So the argument will be within the parentheses and within double quotations, D3. What this function does is convert our numeric value to a string. We've also got the ability to specify the number of digits. That's 3 in my case. You can choose a different number here. For example, 2 will give 2 digits. When the original number is less than 3 digits, the function will add a 0 in the place of the missing digit. Now let's incorporate the variable in the part name argument.
Oops, I missed the ampersand here. Let's copy this part of the code and paste it below. Next, I'm going to bring in a message box to notify the user that the file was saved. Let's type file was saved as our message. And let's copy this argument and paste it within the parentheses. Space ampersand space. Let's remove this final double quotation mark. Lastly here, after the code in the if statement runs, we need a mechanism to exit the loop. Here I'll type i equals 100. Or I can type an exit do statement. And let's test our code. Click OK. You'll remember that we already had a file with name 01-001, so the program saved a dash 002 version. Let's click OK. Now when you save to a new file, you want to control some other parameters like file name, title, descriptions, and so on. So let's take a moment to figure out how we can set that up too. Go to the parameters window. Let's create a few user parameters. There'll be text parameters. This one, part number. Another one for title. And one more, we'll make it true false. Save copy as. And that's so we can control whether we're saving a copy of the file or saving it with some unique file name. And we're done with the parameters window. Let's click Done. Now let's create a form. Go to the Forms tab. Right-click and select Add Form. First, let's drag in a group. Drop it here. Change the name. I'll call it Dimensions. Now I'm going to bring in the length, height, and width parameters. Let's just rearrange them. Down below, I'll bring in the part number, title, and save copy as. Let's change the labels to get rid of the underscores. Now select the form and scroll down the Property Manager. Let's select Predefined Buttons, OK, Cancel, and Apply. Let's click OK and go back to our rule. Double click on Rule 0 to open it up. We're going to add a couple lines of code here. I Properties, double click on Part Number, Space, Equal Sign Space, User Parameters, Part Number, Double click the title snippet now. Space equals space. Title. Now let's go to user parameters. Actually, model parameters. Let's bring in length. Ampersand. Height next. Space, ampersand, space, double quotations, and width. And let's close the parentheses. Open parentheses and a space. Lastly, we need to change the second argument in the save as function so that we'll have the ability to save copy as. Let's bring in the save copy as parameter. And let's click OK. Inventor saves copy number three here. Let's click OK. And let's go to Forms. Let's click on Form 1. Here it is. Here we're going to take a look at a logical issue. First, let's change the dimension. 
I'll make it 45 by 45 by 45. Let me type in some text for the part number, my part number. And now my title, I'll type in my title. Now when I switch save copy as from true to false, watch what happens. Currently the file name is 01. Let's click apply. So the file has been saved, but look at how long the name is getting now. As you see now, the name gets longer every time we save it in this way, so this will quickly get unwieldy. Let's fix this problem. Close the form and open the rule. What I'm going to do is remove this part of the code. And here as well. 0, 01. Zero, 01 here also. Be sure you haven't missed anything, like here now I need to add a backslash in front of the file name. One more, and let's test out our code. Click OK. So here's our new file. This concludes our tutorial about incorporating save commands into your iLogic work.